Welcome to the show. I don't know about you, but I love food and I love my job because I get to talk about anything I want and food is one of my favorite topics. My friend Scott Rains is here from Table 28 and he is an awesome chef. And what I love about what Scott does is that he takes ordinary ingredients and puts a wonderful regional spin on them like really no one else. Scott, welcome. Welcome, thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So I, I just have to ask, when and how did you get so interested in food? Because you, you really are a creative guy in the, in the kitchen. Seriously, folks, he, he, he is amazing. Well, thank you. I mean, it started at a ripe age of three, is just getting <laughs> up in a stool like these and just getting up to the stove and just from basic eggs and sausage and yeah. all that. But I mean, it's just, it's all, I, I owe it to the farmers because without them, I don't. I don't have anything. But I mean, I, I don't. I, I have no creativity. I have any. I don't have anything. So it really starts with those ingredients for you. Well, we have to have them. Yeah. You know, that's the plant. That's the base. That's well, the whole. One of the things that you're so good about. I don't mean to interrupt, but you're so good about supporting those farmers. Going back to that base ingredient source sourcing that, that you you spend a lot of time looking for those local ingredients. Well, it's our job. It's it's my job. It's it's our job as chefs. I mean, we have to do that. I mean, we. This is March. Last week I had a cabbage available. Green heads of green cabbage. Yes. There wasn't a lot. There's still apples. The apple season's been extended. I mean, there's a good amount of apples. They're still so holding on. They were in storage. Buy, mm -hmm. I had to do cabbage, apples, and Arkansas bacon and bacon fat. Mm. You know, I had to have that as one of my side condiments in my dish yeah, for my special of yeah. you know the day, the sure, night. Sure. Sure. Why do you think it's so challenging for chefs such as yourself uh, to find really high quality, locally grown ingredients? What what do you what are some of the barriers to entry there for a guy like yourself? There's not really any barrier. I mean, there it's available. Yeah. I mean, it's just not like I said. This is like the the challenges are like in March, mm. in January, February. They're not as abundant. Yeah. The true. growing season shortened, but a lot of guys. I mean, there's you're gonna have your you know your staples that you know we can't always get but they've been really they the farmers have been getting better like for your carrots and your onions and yeah. those that season's gone but the carrots are coming in now again sure. and they've that's sure. been extended but there's a lot of guys there's some I have some guys that are doing it indoors right. soil based doing plant the hoop, based. hoop house uh, I mean, growing I've had yep. tomatoes in January and February okay right. heirlooms sure sure soil grown right and I mean, they're slow, but... It's a chicken and egg thing, isn't it? I mean, I don't mean to use a food analogy here, but, um, <laughs> you know, the chefs start asking for more, the farmers go, hey, I can make a little money here, and then there's this dialogue, and it begins, and it goes back and forth, and you go, hey, I could use carrots, and they go, ah, I can grow carrots in my, my hoop house or whatever. That's yeah, right. And it goes back and forth. I know that back in the early stages of this whole farm-to-table movement, this uh, consistency you guys, the, the chef who's serving the end consumer, uh, folks like myself who love to come to your restaurant, struggled with consistency, you know, of quality, consistency of volume, because, uh, you know, you're opening your doors every day and got folks coming in and sitting down. And uh, But do you feel like that gap is closing some, Scott, that the farmers are kind of meeting, meeting that? I do. They're growing. For a while, it's they had trouble keeping up with it volume wise. Yeah. I mean, it was just the turnover. They're just, they're, they couldn't get the crops planted fast enough. Mm -hmm. and, and it was just, man, I, well, I, how much can you bring me, you know? And, sure. And it just wasn't filling the orders. Right. But I mean, however, I take what I can get. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I take what I get because it's special. Well, there's where your creativity comes in. Because when you say, I'll take what I can get, then That's you see right. it and you go, okay, now I got to make something out of this. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's awesome. One of the things that we love uh, is, of course, the rice that's grown locally. And uh, here I've got one of my favorites. This is Nature's Blend, and I know you're a big fan of it as well. And I thought we would take a, a really basic food like rice and just talk about that and how a guy like you uh, takes it and uh, thinks about it and then uh, rolls it around and then uh, Presto comes up with a, a really unique way to use Something that all of us can uh, can relate to. We all, you know, we all have had rice. We love rice, and mm. there's so many applications for it. Well, nobody really realizes the time and the essence that's in this bowl. 
I mean, you've got these grains. Mm. I mean, but from the planting to the harvesting to husking, yep. taking the bran, right. milling moving it. the bran and the milling yeah. of the rice. And then you might have, some, some, some varietals take up to five months just to be finally packaged. And uh, I mean, just the whole process and all the varietals are different. That's just, what I love but, about the Ralston family. You know, they're just, you know them as well as I. <laughs> they were just up the river here. Oh yeah. We consider them neighbors and they're doing so much with these varietals. To, they have come so far. It's oh. funny, your, your beautiful mug is like, all over my kitchen. <laughs> I just look at smile and just <laughs> a wink at you. I walk by. But I've got five, six going, and I know they're going to have a dozen or so. And I'm excited. I'm so excited to see some of the ones they come out with. And it just, I, rice is it's the biggest commodity trade in the world. Mm. I mean, it's just, it's huge. It's yeah, used for so many sure. things from yeah. cereals to dog foods. I mean, yeah. that we, because we want so them much. to eat good too. Yeah, and and you know it's very important, and there's just so much about, it. and it's just the varietals that are in it now. I mean, everybody's growing; it's all over the world. It's just not white rice, and I, of course, that's what right. I grew up uh, eating: white and and brown rice. Uh, but with what we see here in this bowl, this is called nature's blend. That's a beautiful know. blend, and they're really this is a self-pollinated uh, natural blend of rice that comes off of the farm, just um, just up the road here, the river, and. You were talking about um, the, your love of rice grits, and mm -hmm. I know this is something the Ralstons are working on. I'd love for you to expound on that. I know grits for a, for a lot of our, our, our viewers and listeners um, is a very southern and regional thing, but the magic that, that Scott places um, on this, the idea of the grit, the lowly grit, is really quite extraordinary. And if you hadn't tried them, particularly the rice grits, you really should. But please talk a little bit about some of your thoughts about rice grits. Well, I mean, the process, and after they're milled, it's just the bottom and the broken pieces, uh, middlings, they have a few nicknames, the short pieces, and shorts, yeah. whatever. Right. I mean, but simmered or cooked in broth. Mm. I mean, man, they're very special. I'm a corny guy. Corn grits, mm -hmm. I'm cornbread. I yep. grew up, I ate cornbread with every meal. You put those beautiful I like, cr uh, but cornbread croutons on These them. are next to, you know, the mm -hmm. corn grit. To me, it's just a preference. I grew up eating the corn grits, but yeah. the rice grits, right. they've been doing it for centuries in the lowlands and the Carolinas with the gold and this, and and it's trickled this way, and, and it's very popular. Mm. You know, Georgia's and Louisiana and, yeah, and across here the is south. getting yeah. across the south, and it's very popular. And I, I mean, I adore it. I yeah, mean, I really do. What um, are some of the techniques that that maybe um, some of our friends at home might apply? Um, like I've said, you're a real wizard in the kitchen, and uh, you really understand the alchemy of food. What What would you recommend with with rice for folks? Well, the rice itself, I mean, like I said, there's different varietals. Mm -hmm. So they're going to cook a little differently. You've got basmatis, you've got jasmine. Basmatis, you, got... you almost want to boil almost like a pasta, get it out when it's tender. And then the other ones have to be cooked more precisely, mm -hmm. whether it's a steamer on the stove mm -hmm. with liquid, with stocks, veggie stocks, chicken stocks, pilafs, mm -hmm. which you would put a mirepoix of mm -hmm. onions, carrot, celery, or leek, or yeah. bay leaf, or... Mm -hmm. Always a little sea salt for the seasoning. Finished with butter or oils, herb oils. Mm. You can make purees, porridges. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Let's go back to the puree for just a minute, because that's a really cool idea. I, we love doing like a cauliflower flour puree mm -hmm. as a substitute for mashed potatoes. Um, have you done purees with with rice? I have, and yeah. they're 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 quite actually. I mean, all you get is that the essence, the pure taste of the grain depending on which varietal you're using because they are it's what is cool is they're all different yeah, yeah the red the black the purple the brown the basmatis the white jasmines they all have a different fragrance a yeah. different texture but pureed i mean they'll kind of be a similarity but if you just took a white mm -hmm. jasmine take, for take example take a white jasmine for instance. take a walk, white walk jasmine, us through what you would do with that cooked in stock Okay. I would probably cook it in stock. Oh, like and, vegetable, and it, and chicken, and, 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 what's your preference? The thing about this is it would be idiot proof because you could pour too much liquid in it and it wouldn't matter, <laughs> stock right. or whatever, yeah. and cook it like a porridge, just overcook it. Like right. if you were to do maybe even a rice pudding or, or what have you. Right. Um, and then you would season it, salt mm -hmm. and pepper, 
I mean, there's a stock, of course, and mm -hmm. then let's say you just puree it in a blender. But as you're doing that, you would finish with like tarragon and chives and parsley and maybe a little extra virgin olive oil. Butter if you want. Butter's always good. Love butter the butter. Butter, 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 butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you would have this nice puree. I mean, you could do it as loose or as thick to your desired consistency, and, however you would want it. And how would you plate that up? So let's say I'm envisioning uh, almost a, let's go with a potato, mashed potato mm -hmm. consistency. Walk us, walk us through that. You, it depends on how fancy you want to be. Yeah. If you want to impress your guest. Yeah. I mean, you could just smear it. I mean, you could All do plate, like, yeah. yeah, you could do a ring. Right. If it's too loose, it'll run. But yeah, I mean, yeah, you could just you do a puddle of it. Right. You could do it to the consistency of potatoes. I mean, you could even pipe it, put mm. it in a piping bag, mm, mm. or just put it in a side little dish, mm. or. If you wanted it to be like the focus and the centerpiece, you and then finish it off with maybe any a, pro, well, you could do it. Leave it. You could do it like that for some type of cool appetizer. Added a shrimp to it or whatever. You from there you could go anywhere. Rice. Yeah, a protein. I mean, you can add any kind of just rich meat stock. Sure, sure. Based sauce yeah, and right. then just pour it over it pour it over it yeah, just like don't cover gravy. it up all the way you want to see it just kind of go yeah, around i say go around it nap right. the top then go around okay that there you go and pull those delicious <laughs> rice oh, that, that rice puree into that In sauce we, and all together with the meat yeah you're gonna have that same flavor it's just a wholly just a totally different texture well let's say for those who who maybe aren't going to enjoy a nice filet with that which sounds delicious but maybe want to go more vegan or, or vegetarian, you could probably do something wonderful with an olive oil and a, and a, a mixture of herbs. That'd be, that'd be perfect. Yeah. And, and, and doing that, honestly, you know, I like to use the stock. And when I'm cooking, it kind of depends on my mood. Mm -hmm. But if I really want to taste the rice, I mean, yeah, I would go water and then finish it with that olive oil and, and the herbs. That would just, and it would give so, it a pretty color too. So the water, you, the reason you're going with the water is that you're really wanting to, you want to, you want, you want the flavor of the rice, that, that base ingredient to come through. You don't want it mask. That's right. Yeah. Huh. Wonderful. The, uh, the, one of the things that, that I've discovered is a rice cooker and, um, man, it's changed my life. You know, because you know, a lot I love of, rice cookers. And if, I'm not. And if if our friends out there don't have a rice cooker and they're interested in this, because what's so wonderful about rice is um, what we have here is a non-GMO product, and you can cook it in the rice steamer, mm -hmm. um, or the I'm, I'm sorry, the rice cooker, and then just put it in the refrigerator, and mm -hmm. then I'll through the week use that rice in different ways. Mm. Not as creatively as you, of course, well, but <laughs> best fried rice. The only way to make it's that leftover rice. Yeah, and I mean, so if you have it in the kitchen, I'm all about what I mean, do I have on hand? Breakfast fried rice. You can eat it for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I mean, make the cakes, make it, crackers. Just you can just take their the glu their glutinous, so you can just right. smash them into a little. Take so when you really cooked them, maybe two make a two cracker, bake them, fry oh, them, really pan fry them. So you, you could just roll them, them out and make them crispy. That can and make you have a cracker. cracker? Get out. Put, put ranch seasoning, garlic powder, ah. onion powder, salt, pepper, a little olive oil, a little egg white wash on it. I mean, it, it's, 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 a, it's a true cracker. I mean, Crackers. I mean, that is such a great idea. I am going to do that. <laughs> Thank you, to. Scott Rains. <laughs> you um, to do. And, and then the, the kinds of things that you can make to go along with those crackers. You know, Endless. Yeah, you just get creative with, with um, like beans. You could use a, like a black bean dip. Mm. Yeah. I like the red bean dip. I like to run off the red beans and rice thing. That's what oh, I do. Oh, that's a cool crackers. idea. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. So you would just take a, an ordinary, like a red kidney bean? Is mm -hmm. that what we're talking about? Yes, a red kidney okay. or a small red. It wouldn't matter because you're going to puree it. But the right. red kidneys are just, I think they're more meaty and creamy and just, yeah. I think it's a better bean. Right. Uh, you could do it meat or meatless. doesn't okay. matter. Okay. But it's a spin off of, let's say you have your leftover red beans and rice, the pot you cooked. Right. I'm all about frugal. So yeah. make yeah. a puree, yeah. you know, and, and virtually put your jalapeno juice or the whatever to make it like the bean dip that comes in the can. You know the bean dip, the good stuff, the Frito-Lay yeah, stuff? I'm making a version of that, okay? But it's with red beans. Yeah. And 
and then you take those crackers that we talked about, and it's just cracker. You do want to put a little bit of olive oil in there just to increase the fat. Yeah. So give it a little fat. Right. In the, in the cracker. In, in, the, in the rice. In yes, the in rice. the cracker. Yeah, And then right. I'll brush them with olive oil and or a little egg, egg wash. White, right. Season them however you want. If you want them plain, because you're going to have a lot of seasoning in the bean dip, just a little sea salt is fine. Yeah. If you want to do garlic powder, onion powder, yeah. ranch, whatever. Yeah, right. <laughs> Flatten ranch. them out. Bake them. You can do them in perfect disc. You can cut them out. You can just do them in just little rustic little piles. Yeah, there. or just and, and then irregular you shape. Your yeah. Dip. I mean, you can put spoon the dip on and eat it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they're a little fragile, but you know, but back, they're delicious. But back to this idea of the uh, uh, using the kidney bean. So mm -hmm. what do you do? Just you just puree that and just a puree dip. it yeah. until it gets to that consistency, that thick consistency. Right. So it's dippable. Yeah. Yeah, and you, just, you want the dip consistency. That's right. And then dip to the chip. You, any secrets of what you add to, to that? Well, I like the, I'll be honest, I like the juice that's mm -hmm. out of the pickled jalapenos. I like to pour a little bit of that in. Ooh. And that also gives it some of the liquid if it needs it. Mm -hmm. And just a little edge too. A little, a little, a little heat. A little, little heat. Yeah. You know. Nice. And, yeah. Oh, oh, you're the alchemist. That's Just for a little sure. little oil of yeah. some sort, olive oil. That is veg awesome. Oil. Hey, I know you are also very focused on, uh, you recognize the need to get kids involved. And you were talking about here you are at three you know, on a stool standing in front of the stove and cooking eggs and bacon. So let's talk a little bit about that. Why do you think it's so important for these kids to get involved? I think it's our job to teach them. Yeah. I mean, because the kids, what yeah. else do they have? I mean, you know, just showing them, telling them where does this food come from, how does it grow. I mean, just getting that education in, getting that mind set into their mind. Sure. Because, you know, from growing it and then preparing it and just, you know, being able to do those things. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's important. There's a it's, lot that goes on there because you're stimulating the, these young brains in a lot, of, a lot of ways. I mean, creativity, you're showing them the, the, how creative you can be. You don't have to necessarily follow a book and there's some kids that are you know their brain is wired that way they want to follow the book and there are others who are more I'm that way. intuitive and they don't really want to follow the book too much right. you know so that kind of honors the way we uh, all kinds of intelligence and then the other is that there's a tactile quality to it isn't mm -hmm. there they're actually learning to use their hands and make something they're all different and i work with kids i work with them at access i'm on their board and it's and they're all different. They're all unique, and they, they're so excited. I mean, when I come in there, they get so excited about food. I mean, they're growing. They all have specific jobs. Yes, One they do. job's on the herbs. One job's on the tomatoes. One job's on the lettuce. lettuce one job's right. on the microgreens. <laughs> They've all got their own duties, and they're just so passionate. I mean, they get so excited about it. They really do. And I'll go in there on the kitchen and work with them on Friday mornings, and we do a lunch, and I serve them, and they're... And they're just, they just get so into it. I mean, they really Because take a hand they on are it. seeing something that they actually had a hand in creating. Right. From the little seed that they plant in, in, their, in their hydroponics operation all the way to on the plate. Amazing. And they're doing, they're doing amazing things as well. When we started helping access, this goes back 20 years ago. Uh, they were just growing a few plants to sell at their, um, you know, Mother's Day sale in the spring, and then they mm -hmm. have a fall sale. Kind of grew to that, and uh, and then now I'm just so proud of what they've done with the greenhouse and with the hydroponics. And Scott Simmons does a great job, and he's sort of following in the footsteps of his mother Norma, right. who's the one who started that back, back in the day when we were helping them over there, and so. It's, uh, it's really inspiring to, to see those kids get involved from seed to plate. It is. What I'd like for people to understand out there about Access is this is a school uh, for children with um, learning challenges mm -hmm. of, of a wide range. And what's wonderful about the garden is that it's non-judging and there's, a, there's, a, there's something there for all of them to do. There that, is. That, that meets them at their skill level and then allows them, just like the plants, to grow. It's it's truly their happy place when they're there. Yeah, they look forward. To, I see them. I've seen them when they've arrived. Yeah, dropped off. Right. And they light up. Sure. When they come in there, I've and seen. And they're that so too, ready, and just so intuitive, and just so into it, to what they're gonna do. They, they're just so eager. 
I mean, it's just, it's wonderful. I've, and I work with them. I give Scott, like you go back to Scott, I give, he's like, well, what do you need? What do you want? So let's try something. So I said, well, all right, let's, let's just do some, let's do some amaranth. Uh, let's get some Snapdragon. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's try this lettuce. Let's try this iceberg or whatever. And I want them to it, harvest it. It's so yay yeah, big. Like, and, and you they want do, them at and tennis ball size. Together. Yeah. And, uh, well, it goes back to what we were saying earlier. They're just, and it gives, but, and then the kids are in this process too because they're all, you know, attached to that. They are. And it's just, right. it's, it's a win-win yeah. and it's a community. Um, it's, just, it's just been, you know, it's been really good to watch that and be a part of it. I mean, I'm honored to, to work with them and just, just be a small part of that. Yeah, well, it's, it's awesome that you're a patron and it goes back to the beginning of this conversation where you're closing that gap between you know what you need and what the farmers producing you mm -hmm. having that dialogue with Scott at access him right. explaining this to the kids they're delivering to you what you need to put on the plate it all works mm. fantastic man thanks so much for being on the show it's been it's been it's always a fun time with you <laughs> thank you and likewise <laughs> and I can't wait to get back to table 28 and have another fantastic meal you bet Hey, if you'd like to see a replay of this podcast, go to my YouTube channel and make sure you subscribe. There's a lot on there. You can learn a lot more about Access School, uh, plenty of rice recipes, and a lot of great uh, stories about the Ralston farm that you'll want to check out. All right, so thanks for joining us. Hey, if you love this video, make sure you comment and subscribe below.